good day ladies and gentlemen. My name is Favi and welcome or welcome back to Arrows DIY. This video is a fun one and it's part of a thrift flip road trip. Hosted every other month by Sammy of Unicorn Dust Designs and Trisha and Kay of Crafting Cousins. This month's co-host is Christine of DIY Craftaholic. So check out their channels in the description box below as well as the playlist so you can get the scoop for the giveaway as part of this playlist. I'll explain the giveaway details in just a bit. But for this first thrift flip, I'm gonna get this beautiful board. I paid a dollar for it at the thrift store and I'm gonna go ahead and just take off all the hardware. Once I take off the hardware, a handy trick is just to put it on a piece of duct tape on the sticky side of the duct tape. That way you don't lose any of the screws. Cause Lord knows I'm always coming up one screw short. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take my favorite handy scraper tool. It's a bench scraper from Dollar Tree and it just helps me take off all of these extra pieces and get them off of this board. I also use a little razor from Dollar Tree as well to take off the extra residue that was left on there. I give it a light sanding and then I'm gonna go ahead and dust off everything so that it can get ready for painting. Now I'm gonna go in and paint with this color called Foggy. It's a chalk paint by Folk Art Home Decor. And I'm gonna go ahead and go heavy on the center and a little lighter on the sides. And this is just the first coat. For the second coat, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little thicker because I wanna use these paint inlays by IOD. Now, if you've never used a paint inlay before, it's fairly simple. You just have to cut it out. And, but as you can see here, this is the front, front side and the grid is on the back. So you do not want to see the image. You want the grid on top. So before I lay the inlay, I'm gonna go ahead and give a good second coat, a little thicker than the first coat. And then I'm gonna take a little spritzer a mist, and mist the inlay on the actual image itself. So you wanna spray it to dampen the entire image and this is going to activate the paint on the inlay. So you don't want it dripping, but you do want it to be moist. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over once it's nice and damp. And we're gonna apply this face down to the wet paint. And you wanna take your time and center it correctly. Now you do have some wiggle room. You have about eight seconds to pick up your image and change its position if you need to. But after that, this, the paint and this paint inlay will start to embed into the chalk paint we laid on the board. Now I'm gonna take a little rag and we're gonna press down the paint inlay into the paint. And now we're just gonna wait for it to dry. It takes about two hours to fully dry, depending on your temperature and humidity. Now, once it's fully dry, I'm gonna go in and spritz it again. And this is just gonna help the paper release from the paint. So again, you don't want it dripping, but you do want to make sure you get all of the images nice and moist. And you'll see how simple it is to use these paint inlays. It is intimidating at first, but trust me, once you start working on it, it it's a lot of fun. And you can reuse these pin paint inlays. They're reusable, you could reuse them up to three times, but each time you use it, the image will be a little fainter. So it won't be as bold as the first time you've ever used the paint inlay. Now, as you can see here, I'm spritzing <laughs> for some time. And then you're just gonna wait about 15 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds, and now we are ready to lift the image. So this is what it looks like when you peel back the paper. You do want to be careful because you don't want to rip the paper. It is fairly thin, but it feels more like rice paper. So it's fairly forgiving. And as you can see, it transfers beautifully as long as you let everything dry before you pull it up again. Now, in my last project, I will show you what happens if it doesn't, if your paint inlay doesn't dry properly and how you can remedy that as well. I'll show you on the last project how you can remedy that as well. So now I'm gonna take the, a nice clean cloth and I'm gonna dab off the excess moisture. 
Now, the border of the paper from the inlay was showing around the side, so I took some chalk paint and I just kind of dabbed on the edges to kind of hide the seam where the film was. And now I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with this Rust-Oleum spray sealer because the paint on this inlay can still be, is still activated. It's not fully dry, so it can smear. So this sealing the paint inlay is preferable so that you don't damage your image. Now I took some chalk paint in the color pine and I'm just going to take the excess off on that paper on the side there and I'm just going to pounce it on the corners to give it an aging effect. I kind of wanted it to feel natural, naturally aged, kind of like a patina look. Not too much, just a little. And once I did that, I came back with a dry wipe, like a baby wipe, and I just pounced on top of the spots to soften them up and kind of lighten it a little bit, take off some of that excess paint. And I was loving how that was looking. So now I'm going to So now I'm gonna work on the hardware and I'm gonna add some antique wax to the hardware. And this is just the first coat, the first go around with the antique wax. And I'm putting a good amount on there because I do want it to be aged. Now I come back with a small paintbrush and I pounce it on it to give it more of a corroded effect. And I let that dry completely. Once it's dry, I'm going to put it right back in place where it was at the beginning and using those handy dandy screws on the piece of tape, I'm going to screw them all back in place. So I'm not going to show you the whole process because so I'm sure that you know how to screw um, little screws back in place. Um, but if you're new around here, I want to welcome you. My name is Favi. I am a crafty mother of six and I love DIYing on my spare time. This is my crafty time. This is my happy time. So if you're new here, I would love if you could subscribe and leave a comment below and tell me all the things because I love hearing from you all. And hit the bell. You don't want to forget, you know, when I post a video. So now I'm going to take some ribbon. This ribbon's from Michaels and I got it at a, on a $5 grab bag from Christmas time last year. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make two large loops and hot glue them together. Now I'm gonna cut off one more strip and this strip is as long as the width of the breadboard. So I dovetail the ends and now I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other. This is a simple way of making a bow. I don't always make my bows this way, but you know, this is how I was feeling today. And now I'm gonna stack them like so and cinch it in the center and with some jute twine, wrap it around about three times and then I'm just gonna double knot it in the back to secure the bow in place now I'm going to fluff the bow now guys I can fluff a bow forever it seems so I am going to stop showing you um, because I, I was fluffing for so long when I was recording I noticed um, it's ridiculous the amount of time I take to fluff a bow but um, I'm gonna hot glue it right there at the top of the breadboard. And now I'm gonna take some of these greenery. I, ha I got these at Michael's on sale last year. I have no clue what they're called though. I am so sorry, but they're from Michael's. So if you want them, you might find them there. And then I'm just going to fluff the bow some more. <laughs> some more. And as you can see here, I'm just playing around with the tails. And um, yeah, that, that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to add a little button because I feel like the hardware match this little button. And these little buttons were my grandmother's, so they're so special to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some antique wax to that sweet little button so that it matches the hardware at the bottom of the breadboard. And I told you about my fluffing, I'm so sorry. Appar I cut out a lot of fluffing. Apparently there's still a lot more fluffing to be cut out, so I apologize for all the fluffing. But you know how you know how it goes with the bows. Now I'm gonna take some jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around the top of this handle here. So I put it through the hole about two times, maybe three, and then I'm just gonna tie a knot at the top. And then once we have a little knot at the top, I'm going to double knot that, and then I'm gonna make a little loop so that I can hang it on the wall. But I love the rustic nature of this little addition here. Um, and then I'm going to cut off the excess at the end to cut off the twine. 
so you know it doesn't go on forever sometimes when I add bows I can see the hot glue and it kind of bothers me so what I decided to do was add some Spanish moss to the top and the bottom of the bow and this is just gonna add more of that nut natural rustic element to it and this Spanish moss is also from Dollar Tree so as you can see here I added to the top and the bottom now this was an afterthought I should have done this before I added the bow but you know when you get crafty and you're just in the zone you forget common sense so I'm gonna add this gold paint in the color Mayan gold it's by folk art treasure gold and it's my favorite gold of all time I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the entire edges of this board with my finger because I just find it easier that way and of course do this before you add your embellishments that would be the right way to do it but this is how it turned out I love this little board it's gonna go perfect in my kitchen for all my bee decor in there let me know in the comments what you think about this one guys I love the way this breadboard turned out it's gonna look so good with all my other kitchen bee decor now let's take a minute and listen to my friend Trish of the crafting cousins explain the giveaway details to you good luck welcome to the thrift flip road trip in today's video, we are participating in an open challenge hosted by Unicorn Dust Designs, Crafting Cousins, and special guest host, DIY Craftaholic. Here, talented creators breathe new life into old items. But wait, there's more. We're thrilled to announce that this month's playlist will have a special giveaway with not one, not two, but five lucky winners. Prizes include DIY paint and Roy Cycle decoupage paper from Unicorn Dust Designs, three wood craft kits from Crafting Cousins, and a $100 Visa gift card from CJ DIY. To enter, just watch the May Thrift Flip Road Trip playlist and comment your favorite project from each creator on their video. Mark your calendar for May 25th when we will announce the winners on our community tabs open to U.S. residents only. Don't miss out on this chance to win and be sure to spread the love by following the playlist link in the description box below. Okay, so for our next project, we're gonna be taking this coffee mug or tea mug, whatever. It's super cute and I've been dying to recreate this. It's originally from Michaels, but I did not get that at Michaels so we're gonna go ahead and take off this hardware just as before the screws were fairly easy to take out but it seemed as though it also had adhesive on it so I had to use my heat gun to just soften up that adhesive and then it just cracked right off it was awesome I love when that happens so now I'm going to sand off those parts there and just get the surface ready for painting I'm actually not gonna paint this. I'm going to try to use the inlay with some Mod Podge. That way I can keep the natural rustic look of this wood without covering it up. Sometimes I like to paint wood, but other times I just love the natural warm tones of that wood. So once it's all sanded off and dusted off, I'm gonna go in with this Mod Podge. It's a new formula called Multi, Mod Podge Multi. So once I add a good layer, an even layer on the whole face of this coffee mug. I'm gonna clean up the excess on the sides and then I'm gonna use this paint inlay. It's from the same pack uh, of inlays. This pack is called Melange. The inlay booklet is called Melange. If you're interested, I'll link it below in my description box as well. And I'm going to spritz it. It's one of the bigger images in this package and I'm gonna spritz it all over to activate that paint just as before. Now I'm going to lay it down on the wet Mod Podge, making sure that the grid is facing up and the paint itself is facing down. So when you lay down this pattern, your words should make sense. They should not be backwards. So now I'm going to embed it just as before with a damp cloth and I'm just going to gently press it down into the Mod Podge just like we did with the paint in the first project. I'm going to press it down as you can see and I just want to make sure that I press down every single piece of this inlay. I want it to transfer beautifully and this takes a minute, doesn't take that long to do, but it's extremely important to get a good result. So now it's fully dry and I'm going to come back and just spritz it as before and we're going to wait about 30 seconds for the film to release from the paint. So now once that's fully 
damp we're just gonna go ahead and peel it now this is my favorite part guys it's absolutely stunning and remember you can reuse this paint inlay again that's my favorite part you know I love budget DIYs and this is awesome that you can reuse it paint inlay up to three times sorry if you hear my family uh, my kids are here and I'm actually feeding the baby right now so if you hear him apologies <laughs> now as you can see the results are stunning and um, once that's fully done we're gonna seal it just as before so using the rust-oleum clear spray I'm gonna give it one good coat and the thing is I should have waited for this to dry a little more but guys I, I gotta confess I am an impatient crafter I mean thank God for heat guns all right so this is the Mod Podge multi in the gloss finish this is the new product that they just released it's like all the Mod Podges in one it's dishwasher safe it's um, fabric you could wash whatever you use this with in the washing machine in the dishwasher it's outdoor and indoor proof so I'm gonna give this another layer of protection since it is gonna be in my kitchen around my coffee station I don't want it to get messed up I don't want it to get warped I don't want it to get mold I don't want anything weird so I'm gonna protect this with this Mod Podge multi next i'm going to go in and put the hardware back on there i'm not going to paint the hardware or anything i think it's perfect just as is you could also paint your inlays so if you wanted to make the flower at the bottom of this design a different color you could go in and paint it just as you would a coloring book uh it's very versatile so then i took some antique wax and i just waxed the edges all around the borders of this just to give it a finished look and I love how it reminds me of coffee which I'm obsessed with give me coffee and Jesus all the time so I'm gonna go ahead and go around and just add the antique wax all around the border to give it a finished look but this is how it turned out guys let me know what you think in the comments below because I'm so happy to finally have done this project now for the last project I'm gonna take this little bird I got this bird in, a ma in another Michael's grab box. I've had it for some time and I wanna give it a remake. Now, let me tell you guys how difficult it was to separate this bird from this sweater situation. I sped it up for your convenience, but you know, thrift flips are not always easy. I know we edit these videos and stuff, but I feel like you need to feel the pain that I felt for a second, trying to remove this sweater from this bird. So I used the heat gun to soften the, the glue. Once I met, heated up the adhesive, I was able to take it off using the scraper again from Dollar Tree. You could find that one in the kitchen section. It's meant for cookies, a bench scraper it's called. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use some pliers to take off all the staples and finally take off this sweater. So once everything was done, I removed any other staples. And let me tell you, Michaels did not want me to redo this piece because they put all the powers to keep that sweater on that bird. So now I'm gonna sand the face, both sides of the bird, as well as the edge of the bird, just to make it nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna repair it with some tight bond, quick and thick, and I'm gonna apply it to the bottom like so. And then I'm just gonna press it down to that little stand that it came on. And then I'm going to wipe off the excess and just press it down some more. I press it down really well. I did not tape it down or clamp it down or anything, but if you have those things, go ahead and do those things. But I did not. And um, yeah, it dried just, like, just fine, just like this. It's fully repaired. And now we're gonna paint it in my favorite foggy color. So now I'm gonna paint both sides and I'm gonna leave the border in the raw wood because I do want to add antique wax in a bit. So as you can see here, I'm just using some uh, chalk paint and a chalk paint brush and I'm just going to paint the front and then I use a little brush to get into the little nooks and crannies. Once it was fully painted, I'm gonna go in with the same paint inlay pack called Melange and I'm going to apply one more thick coat to the area where I'm going to add the paint inlay. 
So now I picked this image and it's from the same booklet I just showed you. And it's just a little pair of vintage scissors and I think it's so cute. Now, remember, we are going to spritz the non-grid side. So I'm gonna spritz on the actual image itself and this is gonna activate the paint just as before and we don't want to make it way too damp. So once it's nice and moist, I noticed that the letters, that the words were still attached. So I had to quickly cut that off, um, very quickly. And I'm just going to lay it as if it were the wing of the bird. So just taking my time, I'm gonna place it where I need it to be. And once I have it there, I'm gonna press it down. And just as before, we're gonna we're gonna uh, press down the image into the chalk paint. Once it was fully dry, I thought it was dry actually. This is actually not dry. It's decept it's deceiving. You think it's dry, but it was really not. I should have known better. But I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz it, and you'll see what happens when I try to lift up the film. I did wait the 15 seconds. You should probably wait a little longer, like 30 seconds. But I told you guys, it's a whole thing. The patience just leaves me when I enter the craft space. So then I'm gonna peel it off. But as you can see, part of the scissor is missing. Now, instead of peeling the whole thing off and crying and ditching my whole project, I said, you know what? Let's lay it back down and let's see what happens if we apply some pressure and some heat. So I took my heat gun and I dried it real good. On a, I put it on a high setting, but I made sure not to put it too close to the project. So keep at least six inches in between your project and the heat gun, depending on the heat setting. So now I'm gonna try again to peel off this paint inlay, and to my surprise, and to my happiness, <laughs> it worked perfect. So I went ahead and I just peeled it off. The front part of the scissor did give me a little bit of problems, but I just went ahead and did the same thing. I spritzed it some more and I applied some heat and some pressure and then it came off fairly easy. Now, when you peel off a paint inlay, your paint is still activated, it's still wet, it's still at risk. So what you need to do is spray it immediately with some kind of spray sealer. If you don't have the Rust-Oleum spray sealer, you can use some Mod Podge, so 50-50 ratio of Mod Podge and water in a spray can, spray bottle, and you could spray it on your project as well. Um, you just need to seal it somehow. And once that's fully dry, you can go in and do anything else to your project. I took some chalk paint, the foggy color, and I just pounced it around the image to hide the seam of that paint inlay film. I'm gonna show you up close what the seam looks like on this project, on this side of the bird. So I flip over the bird, and this is another one of the paint inlays from the same melange uh, booklet. And I'm going to spritz it after I apply a fresh coat of paint. And I'm gonna embed it into the wet paint, just as before. And this side worked perfectly, but I wanted to show you this so that you could see what the seam looks like on the side of the project after you lift up the film. So once it was fully dry, and I was sure that it was fully dry, I'm gonna go ahead and spritz it again. And after I spritz it, I wait the 30 seconds. Okay, maybe 18 seconds. I could not wait 30 seconds. I don't know what is up with me. Probably the fact that I am so busy all the time. <laughs> but I love doing this, so what am I gonna do? I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the film once again, and as you can see, it's perfect. Do you see how it transfers? It's just so satisfying to watch this part. And now you will see what I'm talking about. There's like a film on the side there. There's an obvious line between where the inlay starts and where the inlay ends. And that's why I choose to pounce uh, the paintbrush and just hide the line a little bit. See right there? I'm pointing at it right there. That's the line I'm talking about. 
the end of the inlay film and the beginning so that's why you want to make sure to maybe cut closer to your image if you are using paint inlays maybe cut the debt the white space off around cut closer to your image and that won't happen but as you can see i just remedied it by pouncing the paintbrush around the edges now i'm going to take some sandpaper and i'm going to sand off any of the chalk paint that went over the edge and I do this on all sides of the little bird. If you're still here, leave me an emoji of a little bird in the comments below to let me know that I'm not wasting my time with this video. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I did it so last minute. I need to get my life together because I can't be rushing to get these videos done like this, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. I really do. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of the, more of these buttons from my grandmother's button collection and some ribbon from Michaels. In a previous video, I've showed how I get ribbon scraps from Michaels for a dollar. And this is from that same ribbon pack. Now I'm gonna add another lace from Dollar Tree and another little lace from just my stash. This lace is from my mother. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cinch it at the top and hot glue it to this little glue spot the hot glue that i use is gorilla hot glue and i strongly recommend that glue for anything if you're using metal if you're using wood if you're gluing plastic i i love this glue it never lets me down now i'm gonna hot glue this little button like so and i'm gonna add another a couple other buttons from my stash here just to create a little shabby chic moment and I love how that turned out. Now on this side, I'm gonna add some more ribbon. I'm gonna start with Dollar Tree lace, like so. But you don't have to add these embellishments if you're not into shabby chic. I think it's perfect, just plain as it was. Just I just enjoy shabby chic, so that's what I'm doing here, adding lace and some buttons. And I started off with three, but then as I was putting the buttons away, I found this other button that had a chain attached to it and I thought that was so interesting so I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue that on top as well and then I like adding buttons in odd numbers so now we have four buttons so I had to add one more to make it five buttons because we could only have three or five buttons not four lines <sighs> paint inlays at some point in your life because it's awesome here are all the projects from this video today don't forget to check out the other people in the playlist for your chance to win. Uh, there's five chances, so your odds are looking pretty good. But anyways, friends, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you never miss a video. And uh, share, because sharing is caring. And guys, I'll see you in my next video. If you wanna support me financially, you could do so by buying me a coffee at the link in my description box at buymeacoffee.com. I want to thank you so much for watching, friends. Take care, God bless, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here's another one you might enjoy.